Trump prosecution continues. Special counsel might be wrapping up his inquiry. Jack Smith, you see here, has been working to prosecute Trump at a federal level for two different areas, one related to the confidential classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, the other pertaining to January 6th, and the allegation that Trump was obstructing and interfering with the process of democracy. And if the special counsel is wrapping up, that means he might be coming to a conclusion, and the conclusion is concerning enough that Donald Trump and his team have requested a meeting, and we're going to read through this letter, with the Attorney General of the United States, Merrick Garland, the person who runs the Department of Justice, demanding a meeting. And so it is looking like things are heating up. We take a look at the background here from the Wall Street Journal. They tell us that the special counsel is wrapping up the Mar-a-Lago probe. Says Jack Smith, the guy we just saw, has all but finished obtaining testimony and other evidence in his criminal investigation into whether Trump mishandled classified docs at Mar-a-Lago. Some of Trump's associates are bracing for an indictment. Some prepare to fundraise off the prosecution, but clashes within the Trump legal team are continuing. In recent weeks, we learned prosecutors working for Smith have completed interviews, look at this, with nearly every employee at Trump's Florida home. Every one of them, from top political aides to maids and maintenance staff. That's how bad they want this guy. And just keep this in mind, as Donald Trump is going through the primary season, through the presidential election, he's got teams of FBI agents, teams of Justice Department officials, hundreds of people, I would imagine, working on this to comb through every facet of his life if they have not already done that enough already in the years preceding this era. Some of those multiple rounds of testimony, and my friends, you don't do this unless you're going somewhere with it, on questions that appeared to home in on specific elements that Smith's team would need to show to prove a crime, including those that speak to Trump's intentions and questions that he undermined, that could undermine Trump's defenses. The special counsel team conducted a flurry of grand jury interviews in recent weeks that appeared to tie up loose ends, the people say, meaning we're getting close to a conclusion. But the Wall Street Journal couldn't figure it out. Can't determine whether Smith has decided whether or not to charge Trump or if he has presented a recommendation on the matter to Attorney General Merrick Garland. That's why they requested the meeting, the letter that we will talk about shortly. And it's not unusual for a criminal defendant to reach out to the Justice Department and ask for a meeting. This happens regularly. Our client was involved in a car accident. You haven't charged him yet. We think you might. We just want to reach out to the charging bureau and see who is investigating this beside, before they make a decision about whether to charge or not. We'd like to talk to them. Hunter Biden, as we know, met with the Justice Department, and we'll see if they decide to prosecute him. And if they do, whether they're for any crimes that are legitimate or whether they're just stupid tax crimes. A Trump's spokesman didn't immediately respond to a comment. A spokesman for Jack Smith, who is the special counsel, also declined to comment about the prosecution. But Smith's team has been examining whether anyone tried to obstruct the criminal inquiry. They have obtained evidence that appears to show that Trump held on to sensitive documents after being asked to relinquish them. That's the basis for the obstruction charge. They said, you're not allowed to have the documents. We're the head librarians of this country. And if we say they come back, they come back. Trump said, that's not true. If you're the head librarian, you have more power than I do. And that can't be true in our constitutional framework because the National Archives doesn't run for the presidency and doesn't run the executive branch. Last week, the National Archives sent a letter saying it would turn over to Smith's team of records communications between then President Trump and some of his advisors about how he could declassify documents. So in other words, they're talking about this. They're saying, what should we do? Maybe we shouldn't. Should we? Should we not? And they decided not to. So they had the intentionality to take the documents and not comport with the law. Material that could help prosecutors overcome the defense that Trump said that he could do some of this verbally. So I see what's coming out now. Trump's people are saying, well, he wants to verbally declassify these things. National Archives says, no, you've got to fill out a form. You have to go fill out a form. Uh, I'm the law head librarian, and then you can take the documents. But Trump says, that's ridiculous because if I have to go through bureaucratic hoops in order to get something done and I don't do the thing, then who really is in charge? I say this this is the thing. You get it done. CNN first reported about the National Archives transfer, but they're saying in this case, Trump didn't go through the appropriate steps to get the documents. It's a process crime, essentially. Smith's team is still pursuing a separate inquiry into efforts by Trump and his allies regarding 2020. They say any charges, if filed, would come at a politically delicate time. Trump is already campaigning for the nomination. He's the front runner set to take on Joe Biden. Separate special counsel has been investigating Joe Biden, but nobody cares about that one because he's just a stand-in candidate. And so that is what they tell us from the special counsel's office. And we also know 
that they're investigating Trump not only in the United States, but also outside of the United States. And it goes back to 2017. Now you'll notice January 6, 2021 came after 2017, but they're going all the way back to 2017. The classified documents problem also came after 2017, but prosecutors want records for everything because this is not about legitimate prosecutions. This is about eliminating a political opponent. It says the special counsel scrutinizing the former president's handling of classified documents issued a subpoena to the Trump organization seeking records now related to seven countries. Did they help with the January 6th insurrection? Did they help with the classified documents? Or is this just a prosecutor and a Department of Justice scorned that is going after their opponents? It says federal prosecutors overseeing the investigation into former Trump handling of classified documents have issued a subpoena for information about Trump's dealings in foreign countries since he took office. It remains unclear precisely what the prosecutors were hoping to find. It doesn't really matter. They don't have to find really anything specific as long as they just get something that harms Trump. They're okay with it by sending the subpoena to Mr. Trump's company. But the subpoena suggests that investigators have cast a wider net than previously understood. They're scrutinizing whether Trump broke the law in taking the sensitive government materials with him upon leaving the White House and then not fully complying with demands for their return. The subpoena drafted by the Office of the Special Counsel that was evidently leaked to the New York Times sought details on the Trump org's real estate licensing and development dealing in seven countries, digging into China, France, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Oman, according to people familiar with the matter. The subpoena sought the records for deals reached since 2017 when Mr. Trump was sworn in as president. They want everything. And so the Trump org swore off any foreign deals while he was in the White House. And the only such deal Mr. Trump is known to have made since then was with a Saudi-based real estate company to license its name to housing, hotels, and golf complexes. But they don't care. They want it all. The push by Mr. Smith's prosecutors to gain insight into his foreign business deals was subject of the subpoena. Also dug into the venture known as Live Golf. Collectively, the subpoena's demand for records all the way back to 2017 suggests that the special counsel is exploring whether there is any connection between Mr. Trump's deal making abroad and the classified documents he took with him when he left office. Unclear what material Trump has turned over in response to the subpoena or whether there's any new evidence that supports the theory. Again, it doesn't matter. The judges are giving the special counsel just carte blanche. They really get whatever he wants. They've shattered the attorney-client privilege between Trump and his lawyers. They've shattered executive privilege between Trump and his executive team. And so Mr. Smith can just get whatever he wants. He had interviews with Mike Pence for crying out loud. But since the start of their investigation, prosecutors have sought to understand not only what sorts of materials Mr. Trump removed, but also why he might have taken them with him. Among the government documents discovered in Trump's possession were some related to Middle Eastern countries. And again, we thought that these were letters. Some of these were letters between Trump and North Korea, for example. And when the FBI executed a search warrant in 2022, Mr. Trump's private club and residence in Florida, among the items was materials related to France. A spokesman for Mr. Trump did not respond to emails seeking comment. The Trump org issued a statement saying, quote, while the Trump organization has for decades been a global real estate empire, we made a strict pledge to not enter any new foreign deals while Trump was in office. Mr. Trump has long argued the documents he took belong to him. Justice Department said, no, they don't. Trump said, I took the documents. I'm allowed to. He said, I have the absolute right as the president to take control of documents under the Presidential Records Act. And, and they say, well, it gave it, it gave control to the government, right? But guess who was a part of the government? The president. And we've known this. I think the judge's name was Amy Berman. Amy Berman, Clinton sock drawer. Yeah, Judge Amy Berman, Berman Jackson. This is the this is the same argument from Politico says a judge won't seize Bill Clinton's audio tapes. Why? Well, because he's the president. U.S. District Court Judge Amy Jackson said there was no obvious legal mechanism that the archives could use to force Clinton to turn over the recordings. Said it's not legally proper for her to issue an order since the archives has discretion about when to assert rights under the Presidential Records Act. But if you read her opinion, she says that the court can't question this stuff because the president gets to detail what qualifies as a presidential record or not. And so they use this to stop Judicial Watch from getting access to it. And now when Trump invokes the same type of privilege like Bill Clinton did to say that they're personal records, they throw a fit. Mr. Trump's comments about the records being his personal property were in line with advice he was said to have received from Tom Fitton, the same person who filed that other claim, while establishing a motive for why Mr. Trump kept hold of certain documents. While it could be helpful to Mr. Smith, not necessarily required. 
required. They're working on obstruction. And as we've talked about earlier this week, they're trying to make Trump backed into a corner to say that if he tries this again, if he does anything that that stonewalls the government again, or if he challenges the election again, that means he's a clear and present danger to America and that he needs to be locked up and held in custody without bond. And it wouldn't put it past them to try that. He's also examining the aftermath of the election in 2020 and the violence at the Capitol on January 6th. But as you can see, things are heating up. Special counsel's team is still bringing witnesses to the grand grand jury. One witness this week is William Russell, an aide to Donald Trump who worked for him at the White House. Mr. Trump has other pending issues in various other locations around the country. And now Trump's team is obviously concerned about this. Trump lawyers are seeking to meet with Merrick Garland, the attorney general of the United States, over these special counsel inquiries. Two lawyers for the former president asserted that he was being treated unfairly. We are going to read the letter. The letter doesn't cite any specifics, but it goes over to Jack Smith. He is scrutinizing Mr. Mr. Trump's handling of the documents, as well as efforts to retain power after the election. Now, there are indications that he is approaching the stage where he could start making decisions about whether to seek indictments, especially in the documents case. We don't know so much about the January 6th case, but there are concerns that this is going to be happening soon. Spokesman for Mr. Smith declined to comment on this. The letter's tone, they say, is markedly different from the approach taken by Trump shortly after the FBI executed the search warrant. They said previously in that letter, after the raid, that this was inflaming the country, but this is a lot more confrontational. So let's take a look at the letter itself. From Trump's lawyers, over to Merrick Garland. Sent via courier, May 23rd, 2023, to the Honorable Merrick Garland. Very short letter. It says, Dear Attorney General Garland, we represent Donald Trump, the 45th President of the United States, in the investigation currently being conducted by the Special Counsel's Office. And unlike President Biden, his son Hunter, and the Biden family, President Trump is being treated unfairly. No no president of the United States has ever in the history of our country been baselessly investigated in such an outrageous and unlawful fashion. We request a meeting at your earliest convenience to discuss the ongoing injustice that is being perpetrated by your special counsel and his prosecutors. Thank you very much for your attention to this matter. Sincerely yours, John Rowley III and James Trusty. Sent on behalf of Donald Trump, meaning that they're also hearing that something is coming down the pike soon. And I think this is the end game for them. They They've been wanting indictments for a long time since Trump came down that escalator in 2016. They've been plotting, creating a team, creating a narrative, and generally speaking, as a general rule, you don't do raids of a former president's home and launch multiple prosecutions simultaneously within the same year if you don't have an end game in mind. And that end game is very likely going to be Trump ending up in jail or prison or some analog of that so that he is sidelined and removed from the game. They're not even trying to hide it anymore. They're investigating all of his affairs across companies, across overseas business deals that really have nothing to do with either one of these base inquiries, nothing to do with January 6, nothing to do with the classified documents. Now they may try to make a connection to say those classified documents have something to do with those foreign business deals. But as far as we know, there's no evidence of that at all. And of course, I doubt there ever will be because as we see, most of the rumors about these documents, as we heard, are letters from Kim Jong-un or memorabilia from conversations with France and so on. But they are going to take these and turn them into crimes of the century and prosecute their political enemy because that's how they win.